for some matches, huh? We're here for a show. We're going to give you a show. Let's start the Shmona. Questions are going to be asked to the field. Questions come from different categories of movie trivia. Eight questions. They are each worth one point. Mulan Woo! Jack Bauer, 24. The following question comes to you from Jeremy Hasty. Jeremy Hasty. Each competitor is going to get a spin at the wheel. Movie release is... Wow. The answer is remember the Titan. Captain Neat. Yeah. Uh, Jim Whitworth has been eliminated. It's Eliza Dushku. Two points steal for Rosa. Isaac Sark. And Rupi Gordon. Trains and automobiles. Good guess, but no. Your winner, Mario Bugatti, has cleared the table. Champion of the world once again. Schmodown, as we know, we got a little bit of a WWE flavor to it. It's my turn. Your season is done. Your career is done. Whether they're friends or they're enemies, gonna have to miss me, dog. be honest with you. I'm not sure if I can trust you yet. I wouldn't be with you if you did. Look, it's a long time ago. We have a long history. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, so how's this going to work? Look, it's going to be based on trust. That's it. No more dope broker. Don't start I know, that. No, no, no. That was a long time ago. I know. I know. I know. Look, I'm here to win. Gotta base this on trust. You gotta trust me. Dan and Riley better be right about this, god damn it. Painting champion and runner-up for Manager of the Year, Roxy Stryer. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. I wear orange suit from time to time in Roxy. Today, it's an inner geekdom matchup with a whole lot of storylines brimming. Eric Zipper taking on Adam Lavin. That is true. It's so close to being the right pronunciation, too. Did I not? <laughs> Adam Lavin? Uh, we're almost there. I love the guy so much. We share an IPA <laughs> from time to time, and I will get his last name at some point. He is number three ranked in the world of the inner geekdom. Everybody's looking up, of course, at the belt holder, Rachel the Crusher Cooking. And while it seems like Adam is the kind of person who wants that belt, Eric Zipper, very different mission. He kind of went rogue. He ditched his buddy Winston after his last matchup. And then you have Eric kind of being hip-pocketed by Kaiser, so he's not really represented by Kaiser. Kaiser's not his manager, but he's just kind of like maybe playing the puppet master from afar with Eric's career. Seems like Eric wants more shots at corruption than he necessarily does winning any sort of belt. And you can't let that blind you. You have to focus on the belt. And this has happened so many times in this league where you just get sidetracked. And I don't know if it's going to be beneficial for him in the long run because he is so short-sighted on this one. That's right. And, and Eric, a guy who you don't expect that kind of behavior from, but that's the Eric that we're getting. So we don't know what kind of zipper we're going to see on the stage today. We know what we're getting with Adam. He's an all-time inner geekdom player. He's a beloved figure here in the movie trivia Schmodown. And they did a pre-interview. Let's take a look at that right now. I'm in a whole new frame of mind. We pretend to be heroes, but... Going off on his teammate? I don't understand what that means. I'm so tired of being unappreciated and underplayed in this league. I was going to be the new leader of Corruption. That's what you said. You said you said I was a future star of this league. What is wrong with you people? I'm here to get 
to Mike Kalinowski. I'm gonna win matches until I can see the look on that smug son of a bitch's face when I finally beat him. It's been a minute since I've been here, since I fought. Last time I had a really good match against Rachel Cushing. That went pretty much more or less as I sort of expected it was gonna go. And as far as Adam Lava goes, he ain't going anywhere. And I like you guys. I've been trying to get back and interdict him for a while now. I mean, Kaiser's a shady guy. I don't necessarily trust him, but he said he was gonna get me matches, and I'm here to here to make a scene. I can get things done in this I was supposed to face Jared Habon, who I am a little familiar with. Eric Zipper, sorry, man, I've uh, never heard of you. Whoever it is, I'm I'm all in 100% on whatever Christian throws at me. I am one and one going into this match, and I feel like if I beat Adam, who is a respected player in the league, then that puts me on the map. I don't. I think there's anyone that I wouldn't be willing to go up against. We know that in that fatal four-way, there's going to be Chance. Chance Ellison is an inner geekdom now? I would love to see the look on that guy's face after I wipe the floor with him. Ooh, facing Kalinowski again. I wouldn't mind that. That'd be a lot of fun. He really brought he brought that good game the last time I faced him. But, uh, you know, sort of see how things would change this, this time around. Chance, Mike, corruption. I don't care. I am coming for you. I don't care whether it's in inner geekdom, whether it's in teams. My match with Adam today, it's a stepping stone. You know, I'm here to win, and then I'm coming for you. Look, I feel like this league is filled with one too many bad guys. So I'm excited at eradicating any sort of evil that's necessary out of this league. So Eric Zipper, as much as you think you want to and can beat me, I think you've got something else coming today. There, that's what I'm talking about. Is that Adam? He just stands up. He's classy. He's the guy that I want standing on top of a tall building overlooking the city. Zipper, what the hell's going through this guy's mind, Rox? I, I honestly don't know. I think it's uh, revenge. It's anger. It, it like I said, short-sighted. He, he's not looking towards the future. And I like that image of Flavik on a on a rooftop. He, he's kind of guy who look, look, look good with like a billowing cape. Yeah. Thing. So some kind of mask. If you're looking at this from a manager standpoint, right, and you're let's let's put you and I hate to do this to you, but put you in the shoes of Kaiser. What is he looking at with an Eric Zipper? Is he is he considering taking him on, or is this just kind of him playing with the inner geekdom league? Because we know Kaiser does enjoy his share of power. Listen, I don't think it's right what he's doing. I think he's testing Zipper right now, and if you want him, take him. What are you doing? Just testing the waters. I, I think it puts Zipper in a bad position too, because now he has to compete for the love of a manager. I don't think it's fair. Well, he did get Zipper this matchup in the inner geekdom realm, and this is something that Eric's wanted for a long time. Eric currently ranked number six, Adam ranked number three, and we're going to see who's going to come out on top here today. Roxy Stryer has our tale of the tape. What are these nerds good at? Yes, I do. Zipper's strengths are DC, Marvel, and scores and soundtracks, which is definitely not Ooh, a strength of mine. And Adam Flavik is great with Star Wars, DC, and Marvel. So both great with DC and Marvel but Star Wars being Adam's strength and Eric's being the scores and soundtrack. Well, let's see if these geeks get nothing but Middle Earth today. It's about to go down. Roxy, you ready? Oh, yeah, Mark. And it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. <laughs> Inner geekdom style. Three rounds to the finish. Introducing first, the challenger. Coming in, the number six ranked inner geekdom competitor with a record of one and one, one knockout. Please welcome Eric Z Man Zipper! Magneto was right. Kind of whatever. Mostly booze, Eric not really caring about appeasing the crowd. I mean, at he all. can't make his head's in the game at all right now. What's happening? He seems like a very flustered player. He seems like he's in act two of any superhero movie where mm. he's doubting himself and what his future path is. True, true. That's fine. And his opponent, the number three ranked competitor in the inner geekdom movie trivia showdown division with a record of two and three with one knockout. Please welcome Adam the Haymaker. Adam, this is a guy 
who knows how to curry favor with the crowd, with us up here at the answer desk. This guy knows how to compete, Rox. And I'm a fan of blowing kisses. He's very good at blowing kisses and wearing sunglasses just on that second button like cool guys do. Oh, I didn't know that that was a sign of that. I'll keep that in mind when I'm looking for them. Uh, totally. Oh, and there they go. Shades on shades. Rarity. A lot of glasses up there. <laughs> and back right. to the shirt. And <laughs> back to the shirt it goes. All right, gentlemen, this is the inner geekdom division. So you're going to have three rounds. Your first round will be 10 questions from 10 different corners of the inner geekdom know-how galaxy. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round one. As soon as we ask the question, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once you do and we address you by name, please show what you wrote on the whiteboard to your camera at the same time you verbalize your answer into the microphone so Roxy and I can hear it loud and clear. You each have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want to repeat it, you just want to buy yourself some time, use the JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be used at any time throughout the duration of the match. We will be nice with you. Please be nice with us when we try to pronounce the names in Harry Potter books. We have not read any of them combined. Is that right, Rox? Oh, it's definitely right, Mark. Oh, Never boy. read a Harry Potter book between the two of us, but we're ready to get here going today. Adam, are you ready? I'm ready. And Eric Z-Man Zipper, you ready? Let's get this over with. <laughs> then let's get ready to schmo down. Great attitude. Great attitude, man. All right. Asking the first question will be the legend in the movie trivia Schmodown, Mark Baby Carrots. <laughs> he is a legend. Your first question comes from the world of DC movies. DC movies. And your question is, who directed 1978's Superman? Not loving the attitude going on. Even in the pen writing, he's got tood. Question uh, received a, a snicker from Robert Butler the third. Huh. Go to five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Adam. Richard Donner. It was in fact Richard Donner. Did Z-Man have it? I mixed him up with the second one, Richard. Okay. Question number two in the category of Star Wars. In Solo, a Star Wars story, what is the name of Han's girlfriend, played by Amelia Clark? And Roxy, you uh, gave me some information right before we went to air. You've seen Solo, a Star Wars story, how many times? I think like eight. That is so impressive, and I am proud. But I still don't you. know much about Five, it. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, go to you first, Z-Man. Kira, spelled it in a way in that totally makes sense. Kira, <laughs> you almost got the apostrophe in the right place. Did Adam have it? Kira, he also with did, a weird apostrophe. An apostrophe. Yeah, he put you both one get above. The yeah. It's, it's Q-I apostrophe R-A if you're keeping score at home. Move on to Middle Earth. <coughs> Middle Earth. And your question is, in the two towers, Mary and Pippin meet Treebeard after escaping the uruk -hai. What is the name of the forest they escape to? You think I could go by Treebeard? <laughs> I think we should start calling you Treebeard on Collider Live. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. Good plan. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Eric. Adam, what do you got? Dark Forest, but I don't think that's right. Uh, you are right in that it is not right. Great. Eric Zipper. <laughs> it's definitely called the Forest of Question Mark. <laughs> I can't quite give that to you either. It's Fangorn. 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 Come on, guys. Fangorn. That was my second choice. When yeah. you need to escape, I grew up on the East Coast, and we all know about Fangorn. Oh, me too. Yeah, of course. Boston thing. Boston. Question four, heroes and villains. In Watchmen, which member of the Watchmen team has the real name John Osterman? Whew. I'll tell you what, if my name was John Osterman, I'd probably change it, too. <laughs> Give myself really? a big-time superhero name. Like what? John Osterman. That sounds like your What accountant. are you thinking? Fangorn, mm. five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Adam. Eric, what do you got? Dr. Manhattan. It was Dr. Manhattan. Did Adam have, have it? Dr. He Manhattan. did it. Dr. Manhattan. Still with that name. I have, have it. Well, it was Manhattan and, and Lavic. All right, so Adam <laughs> now, he's only missed one question. Eric's missed two. He's two for four. Three to two, Adam with the early lead here. Your next question comes from the world of Marvel movies. Marvel movies. And your question is? Who provides the voice of Juggernaut in Deadpool 2? Juggernaut. That's a, can I change my name? That's going to be. No. I'm you, going from Fangorn to Juggernaut. You can't. You locked it. I can't pull off a Juggernaut. Five. Four. Can I get a repeat? I can do that. Who voices Juggernaut in Deadpool 2? It's going to be Eric's first JTE rule. 
juggernaut of a question. <laughs> it was not my best. That's yeah. pretty, pretty high up there. Five, four, three, two, one. Fence down. Going to you, Adam. I believe it's Ryan Reynolds. It is Ryan Reynolds. Does Eric have it? I didn't have it. He did not. So now with that, Lavic takes a two-point lead over Eric. Back over to you, Roxy. Question six in the category of Harry Potter. What is the specific name of the oath Snape makes guaranteeing that he'll protect Draco in the Half-Blood Prince? This is exactly why I don't read these things. I, but I kind of great, right? It sounds intriguing, don't get me wrong, but mm. God, is it, it just seems dense. Mm. Like a thousand pages. You don't like a good oath? Got eight-year-olds reading them. Five, four, three, two, one. Eric Zephyr, did you have it? Uh, the solemn vow. <laughs> it's a hell of a guess, <laughs> and it's actually pretty close, yeah, but no. Yeah, not too far. Adam. Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> We're Can actually looking no? for the unbreakable vow. Oh, I was the closer. Unbreakable <laughs> vow, which, as we all know, for half the country is marriage. <laughs> wow, this took a turn. Wow. Crap, tell taking us, a tell us more about, about your, your personal opinions. life. <laughs> Simple divorce joke. <laughs> so, some people took it real personally. Yeah, some people. A lot of, a lot of I see you. new divorcees here in the house. It's like that meeting in Jerry Maguire. <laughs> all right, move to the world of Star Trek. Star Trek. Name one of the two films in which we see James T. Kirk die on screen. Spoiler alert. Yeah. That got the crowd back. Lost with the whole marriage bit. <laughs> now they're back with you. Got him back All with you needed was Captain Kirk, Kirk dying. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Adam, you're up. Star Trek Into Darkness. We can accept Star Trek Into Darkness. Does Eric have that one? Star Trek Generation. He had the other one, Star Great. Trek Generation. Love that. Good one, two punch. A lot of Star Trek know how between the two gentlemen. Question eight, my favorite category, DCEU. Shazam is set in what city? Uh, you, uh, you pronounced the name of the movie wrong. What do you want me to say? It's got an exclamation point at the end of Shazam. it. Shazam! Thank you. <laughs> Shazam! Wow. But nothing happened. I don't know, I supposed to. Five, know. four, three. You got to say it louder. Two, one. Pens down. Go to you, Eric. Philadelphia. It is, in fact, the city of brotherly love. Adam? Philadelphia. He got it with an exclamation point. An emphatic shout out to the 76ers. All right, gentlemen, your ninth category. And if you're following us at home, you know this is the penultimate category in round number one is mixed bag. Could be anything. Literally anything. Good bet that it's a nerd question. What is Count Dooku's Sith name in the Star Wars saga? I don't have to tell you this. They, uh, like you're born with a name, then you get a Sith name, which is usually cooler than your, I'm your John I'm nervous to Osterman. ask you to make a Sith name for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Scared. Five, four, three. Uh, I need a repeat, please. Yes, sir. What is Count Dooku's Sith name in the Star Wars saga? And that is Eric's second usage of the JTE rule. Only one more left. Hey, you got him. Might as well spend him. Yeah, yeah. that's true. You're just sitting in your 401k. I don't Five, know. <laughs> four, three, two, one. Okay, pens down, and we are going to you first, Adam. Darth Tyrannus. It is Darth Tyrannus. I completely blanked. He did not have the cool sounding dinosaur name, and so with that, <laughs> Adam takes a three point lead over Eric with just one question left in round number one. Roxy, what's our final category? Well, for this final category, it's coming from a patron of ours. Thank you so much to Jeremy Hastings. Jeremy. Well done, sir. We love you, Jeremy. We really appreciate it. And he has selected the category of MCU. Oh, that stands for Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, facts, straight facts here. Which MCU film features a post credit scene featuring Captain America talking about exhibiting patience? Uh, just overall, as a person, do you like post credit scenes? Or do you find it tiresome to sit through a movie just to see? I need them now. <laughs> I'm so entitled to them now. Five, I've earned it. Four, three, two, one. Did Eric have it? Spider-Man Homecoming. You did have it. He pulls it within two of Adam, unless he got it right as well. Spider-Man Homecoming. Wow. He did. So, Adam, that's a very impressive round number one. I mean, Eric Zippery got five out of ten. That's solid. But, Adam, eight out of ten. That is a guy who deserves his current ranking in the inner geekdom division. Rox, what do you think of this round? I just think that he had the stronger attitude going in, and because he was taking this so seriously and he wants that belt, we're seeing it on the scoreboard.
That's right, and we're seeing the sunglasses hanging ever so gently off that second button, just the way God intended. We move on to round number two. In round number two, each competitor gets a spin at the wheel, which you're going to see a whole lot of cool inner kingdom categories on. Each one of those wheel slices contains five questions. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, there is stealing available in round number two. If you're not sure of the answer, ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes does go down to one point, as I previously thought. So, Adam, you're up by three. Uh, you can spin now, or you can defer to Z-Man. What are you feeling? Uh, must spin. He's going to spin. All right. He's going to grab it from the wheel, like not the, the pegs. Yeah, the wheel. Never the pegs. He's, he, oh, God, he touched the peg. Should we kick him out? <laughs> Good spin altogether, I think though. we need to. I think we need to electrify the pegs. <laughs> If you touch them, you burn. That's right. So this could be a spinner's choice here. DC movies. He did He's going to keep it. it. He named it as a strength, so I would have been surprised if he hadn't. He's going to keep DC movies, and for that, we go to Roxy Stryer, who will be administering your five questions. Question number one. William Hootkins, a.k.a. Portkins from Star Wars, plays this character in 1989's Batman. Lieutenant Eckhart. That is correct for two points. And that's the new front runner for my favorite question in the history of the movie <laughs> trivia Shmona. Did you guys know that Porkins was also <laughs> Eckhart? It's fantastic. It's the most excited I've seen you all day. <laughs> it's Porkins. Okay. It's Eckhart. The guy's last name is Hootkins. This is great. <laughs> all great pronunciations. Number two. In 1978, Superman, after saving Lois from the helicopter crash, Superman apprehends a thief that was trying to steal what? Jewelry. Diamonds. <laughs> Roke is laughing somewhere. Jewels. Jewelry <laughs> is correct. There we go. Two points. Hey, fun, hey, fun fact for you. That actor... That is the thief. He actually plays uh, Thomas Wayne in Batman 89. Now he's oh, just showing off. God, I thought you were going to go back to Hootkins, and I was about <laughs> to lose my mind. Same movie. <laughs> Question three. Who voiced the Green Lantern, Tomar Ray, the lantern who first greeted Hal on Oa? I believe that's Jeffrey Rush. I believe you're correct. <laughs> Two well more done. points. And well pronounced there, Rox. I don't, I I don't know if that's true. Question number four. In 2009's Watchmen, what is the name of the newspaper to which Rorschach sends his journal? Can I get multiple choice, please? Yes, you can. Is it A, Daily News, B, Mail Watch, C, New Mail Today, D, New Frontiersman? A? It's incorrect. So Roxy's going to read the options again for Eric just so you have them for the possible steal. A, Daily News. B, Mail Watch. C, New Mail Today. D, New Frontiersman. Uh, D, New Frontiersman. That is correct for one point. That was my it's gut, steal, and I went Roxy. against it. Adam was rolling until that latest step yeah. by Eric Zipper. Adam, one more question to rebound. Here we go. At the beginning of 2006's Superman Returns, how many years has Superman been gone? Six Five. years? Incorrect. Five years. Five years is correct. What a, a huge, huge close steal. to the round. It looked like everything was going Adam's way for those first three questions. The last two, Eric suddenly steps up. He zipped that one up. I Am I getting like better? That was a really All good right. analogy to his last name. All right, Z-Man, now you have a spin at the wheel, though you've already been answering some questions correct. Spinning from the wheel, wow. not the pegs. That was a crazy round. Well, let's not forget, Adam's certainly capable of stealing a few questions on his own, so Eric can't afford a trip up here. Without a doubt. Oh, this looks like DCEU. Is he going to keep it? He's holding his his mouth closed. He called DC a strength. As though he wants to scream something. A lot of peer pressure from the crowd. 
He's wow. going to spin again. Spinning again. He's going to spin again. A lot of dangerous things on there he could hit now. I got a theory I about, about this. I don't think that he fears the DCU too much. I just think he sees something that he might want a little bit more. Which is? That could be Harry Potter. And <laughs> judging by the look on his face, I'm not sure that's the category he wanted. I, I don't think so. Not a, not a strength, at least not listed. So Harry Potter, what did me and Harry Potter have in common? We both have a scar on our face that looks like a lightning bolt. <laughs> All right, cool. Harry. <laughs> Here we go. Five questions okay. in the world of Mr. Potter. And your first question, which one of Ron Weasley's brothers works with dragons? Five, four. Bill. Excuse me? Bill. That is incorrect. For a two-point steal, does Adam have it? George. Looking for Charlie. Charlie. They call him Chuck in the books. Ouch, Charlie. They call him. <laughs> the dragon bit my finger. It really <laughs> hurt. Got a real life dragon in the studio right here. For, you, you, you can't manufacture that kind no. of magic. <laughs> All right. Your next question in the world of Harry Potter. What brand of wizarding candy? includes a collectible card of a famous witch or wizard in every box. Multiple choice. Is it A, Birdie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, B, Chocolate Frogs, C, Pumpkin Pasties, D, Fizzing Wisbees? Uh, chocolate Frogs. It is Chocolate Frogs Doesn't for a point. point. <laughs> I felt like I was in a Willy Wonka movie for a minute there. Schnozberries right. taste like schnozberries. Your third question. Schnozwangers. <laughs> In the world of Harry Potter, uh, your next question. In the Goblet of Fire, who did Neville Longbottom take to the Yule Ball? You go to five. Multiple four. choice. Uh, is it A, Hannah Abbott, B, Parvati Paddle, C, Lavender Brown, or D, Ginny Weasley? Ginny Weasley? Give the man a point. Slow He's and steady. negotiating his way around what clearly is a more difficult category for him. Eric Zipper does have a chance to go into round number three tied with Adam, but he's got to get these last two correct on their nose. And your next one is a Hufflepuff values hard work, patience, and loyalty. What animal is their house mascot? Badger. It's a badger. <laughs> Eric needed those stinking badgers, and now he pulls it within two, and he's got one question left, and this could pull him even with Adam as the crowd gets very antsy <laughs> with this last query in the world of Harry Potter. I swear, dogs love me. In Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, what does Horace Slughorn disguise himself as whilst trying to hide from Harry and Dumbledore when they come to ask him to teach again? A uh, uh, recliner, reclining chair. Ladies and gentlemen, we are tied at wow. 14. <laughs> the wow. look on Eric's face when he found out he was going to have to answer five Harry Potter questions, I would not have expected that performance at all. And he pulled through at the end there, too, with getting those last two questions for two points each. Really did. You take a look at what Eric was able to do with his last couple questions. Adam got his last couple questions stolen from Eric, and now we find ourselves tied going into the deciding round at number three, in which each competitor is going to give us three numbers. These numbers can range. You can start at one if you want you can end at 16 anywhere between that is going to be fine if you go to 20 sorry i got no questions in that category your first question is worth two points your next one's worth three points and your last one should we make it that far is worth five big points there's no stealing there's no penalty for missing a question uh we go to adam first because we're tied adam you are the favorite in today's match so which three numbers between one and 16 feel lucky to you good sir <clears throat> um two six and 14. Two, six, and 14. And Z-Man Zipper, you're tied with Adam. What are your lucky numbers? Three, eight, and nine. Eight and nine. All right. Eric, you're going to have your question first. It's going to be administered by this guy. And you selected number three for your two-point question. And that corresponds to the world of the MCU. Okay. The MCU. And your question. What two main characters does Loki recruit to his side using his staff at the beginning of 2012's Avengers? Yeah. Um, 
Hawkeye and Eric Selvig. Give the man two points and the lead. Wow. So now we bounce over to Adam. Adam, now you have to answer your two-point question. You selected number two, Roxy. What does that correspond to? The category is The Hobbit for two points. What TV personality and a well-known Tolkien fan makes a brief cameo as a Lake Town spy in the desolation of Smaug? Stephen Colbert. Wow, he's really feeling the groove there. And he got it for two points. <laughs> Wasn't sure if Adam was just totally at peace or he was about to hurl. Yeah. All right, Eric, bounce it back to you because we're tied again at 16, and you selected number eight for your three-point question. And that corresponds up here at the answer desk to Lord of the Rings. These were made even before the Hobbit movies. <laughs> and your question. For three points, the title The Two Towers refers to which two towers according to the movies? Um, five. Isengard and the Eye of Sauron. That is incorrect. Looking for Orthanc and Baradur. Orthanc and Baradur. Jesus Christ, these are hard questions. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Eric. I don't think I could have gotten it right, considering you just made those words up. His three <laughs> po I might have just made those words up. All right, so now, Eric, we come down to your five-point question. This is your five-pointer, and if you hit it, you're going to force the hand of Adam to answer either his three and or his five. You selected number nine for your five-pointer, and that corresponds to the world you spun away from in round number two, DC. Okay. And your question is, this actress played Martha Kent, Superman's adoptive mother, in 2006's Superman Returns. How many JTEs do I have left? Uh, you have one left. Okay. Go to five, four, three. JTE. Two. Had a feeling you'd spend it. <laughs> this actress played Martha Kent, Superman's adoptive mother, in 2006's Superman Returns. I think I'm thinking of Smallville, but Annette O'Toole. Can I look for Eva Marie Saint? Oh, cool. Sorry, Eva Marie Saint is the actress. So, with that, Eric is tied. Hasn't lost anything yet. <laughs> but Adam needs to get either his three or his <sighs> five-point question correct in order to defeat the Z-Man. So you selected number six. The category is heroes. Okay. In Thor, during the fight against Loki at the end of the film, how did Thor keep him on the bridge? He knocked him down and put Mjolnir over his chest. And yeah. your winner, Adam Lobby! Defeats Eric Z-Man Zipper. What a match for the Haymaker. He got it right. You put the thing on the guy's chest, and that is how it shakes out. Eric Zipper, a very game effort here, Roxy. He proved his worth. He proved his medal. I think that Kaiser was right to hit pocket, if not manage him outright. But Adam Lovick, the winner here today, and rightfully so. I love that we're cheering for the bigger nerd. <laughs> it's, it's the only time that happens. What 2019 is all about, kids. Yeah. Who knows more about the inner geekdom? Well, today it was Adam, and on a future day, it might be Eric. We are going to have an interview with both Eric and Adam, the loser and the winner, respectively, of today's match with their own Jen Sturger. Jen, it's all yours. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Jen Sturger here with Eric Zipper. I feel like you came out in this mood and you're still in it. Yeah, I'm just I'm tired, Jen. I'm tired of losing. I'm tired of having a, a record that doesn't reflect how good I am at this game. It really doesn't because I'm, you have so much knowledge, especially when it comes to inner geekdom. But I mean, you had your breakup with your teammate. And now uh, this inner geekdom loss, like how do we regroup from this? Well, I mean, as loath as I am to put faith in Kaiser, uh, I'm hoping that in teams, uh, things will start looking up for me. That yeah, how's that How's that working out with that whole hip pocketing thing or whatever he calls it? Yeah, it wasn't a term I was familiar with either because sports. But 
I hope it goes well. It's I, I feel confident in, in Paul and I winning our first match. I think that we are going to be a scary team. I don't disagree with that at all. So, like, we're going to talk about moving forward and getting back on the board. Who do you want next? Well, you know, I want to take on somebody that I respect, somebody in this game that, like, if I would beaten Adam today, I would have felt really good about it because I respect him as a player. He's good at what he does. So I would really like to take on Haley Fouch and the Scream Queens. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We... Haley and I were friends. We were on a team together in Anarchy uh, last year. And uh, I think that would make me feel better going forward because It's so weird she because someone had told me that you, were, that you were like kind of talking behind the scenes that you wanted to take on Mike or Chance, which I think is a little crazy, personally. Oh, I definitely want to take on Mike and Chance. Corruption is my ultimate goal. Trust me. You just feel like you might They're need another... Goal. Another win or two under your belt before you feel comfortable with that? Well, I wouldn't necessarily put it that way, but wouldn't hurt. Hmm. Wouldn't hurt. Well, tough loss today, man. Sorry. Yeah, you're telling me. Oh, we'll get you back in there. We'll get you back in there. All right? Chin up. All right. Thanks. And I'm back with a very happy Adam Hlavik. Oh, my gosh. How does it feel to be back in the wins column? It's great. I love it. Uh, this was a really, really fun match. This was a match that played into all of my strengths. So I knew as soon as these questions started coming out, I was like, oh, this is this feels good. I feel good about this. I feel pretty confident about about winning this. Isn't it some days that's just how it goes? Hey, absolutely. And in this morning, I was I'm always a little stressed before I do these because you never know what what's going to get thrown at you. So I always always assume the worst. And usually when I assume the worst, I tend to usually win. So maybe that's my tactic going going forward. Thoughts on Zipper and how he played out there today? Did great. Uh, you know, I didn't really know too much about him as a performer in this match. So it, I, I love coming into this and not knowing what to expect, and everyone thinking. So you don't kind of like overthink it, basically. Not at all. And, and it's so funny to come into this and have a lot of people sort of assume it's going to be landslide sometimes. I'm like, well, you should never underestimate anybody because underdogs, when they win, they usually do it extremely well and they landslide. So it was it was a great match. He's a great opponent. And you handled DC Movie News pretty well. He did get those steals on you, though. He did, and that's my fault for not going with my gut. Uh, both of those questions, Trust Watchmen, I, I agree 100%. Both Superman Returns and Watchmen, I went against my gut, and I paid for it. So lesson learned, go with your gut always. Always. And so who are we going with next? I mean, there's so many. There's such an open field right now, I feel yeah. like, in inner geekdom. But obviously, all roads are being paved to get to Rachel Cushing at Comic-Con. <laughs> Who do you want? Which which path do you want to take? Because I feel like any of them are going to be awful right now. Yeah, I'm I'm fine with going to the trenches and just going straight through the fire and going after Kalinowski and then going to Cushing. Those were two incredible opponents, and I feel very honored that I got to play against them. Uh, regardless of what the outcome was, it was just so great to play against people who are so passionate, so prepared. They really know their stuff. I, I think they really need to be looked at as some of the greatest players in this entire uh, schmodown. So I just kind of want to go straight into the fire. Nice. I love that. I love that you are just ready to be back in that title hunt, man. Congratulations Thank again. Thank you so much. And uh, can't wait to see what we have cooked up for you next. Thank you. All right, so Roxy, you see there Eric still kind of feeling his way around who he is in this league. But let's talk about Adam Lavik and how he really is taking aim at that belt. This is a big win here today against a fellow top 10 competitor in the inner geekdom. How do you see Eric matriculate, excuse me, how do you see Adam matriculating to getting that matchup possibly one day against Rachel Cushing? Do you think he has the goods? I do think that he's just grown and grown, and I don't know where he will stop because what we watched today and what we've seen from him so far, this guy is a an amazing competitor, especially in inner geekdom. He has so much knowledge. And if I can just ask you, because you're a fellow manager, if you're looking at Eric Zipper's performance, right? And again, I hate to do this. I'm going to put you in Kaiser's shoes. You watch this match play out here today. Eric Zipper showed some moxie. He showed a lot of know-how in a variety of different categories, even categories he didn't necessarily want. He struggled with Harry Potter, but he managed to get points. 
are you looking at this as somebody you can manage here today? He didn't give up, and I do like that, but he came in with the wrong attitude. You've got to come to play for the belt, and I would never manage a single player who wasn't there for one reason, and that reason is to get the belt. It is calling out corruption, maybe getting a little sidetracked and not having his sights singularly focused like what we've seen with Adam on getting that belt. Well, that does it here today. Once again, your winner is Adam the Haymaker, Lavic defeating Eric Z-Man Zipper. I want to give a big shout out to everybody here in the studio, all of our hardworking crew, the camera operators, everybody. You can give them a hand at any time you want, studio audience. And I also want to thank my incredible co-announcer, Roxy Stryer, where can all the kids out there find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. I'm merely Mark Ellis at Mark Ellis Live. Upcoming dates include San Diego Comic-Con. I'm doing stand-up at American Comedy Company with some of my funny nerd friends. Thursday of Comic-Con. Then Saturday is the big movie trivia Schmodown event. You can get your tickets right now at the Schmodown Live or MarkEllisLive.com. Until then, for everybody here, Roxy Christian, I'm merely Baby Carrots, and we'll see you next time. Can I come? Hey, Mr. Beauty. How's it going? Hey, I'm a, I'm a big fan. I love Freely Acclaimed. And who, you guys who are, are you? My favorite uh, I'm Brendan. People call me the kid. Oh, you're the kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. nice to meet yeah. the kid. Total pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of the team. I've watched all Creelty Acclaimed's matches. Mm -hmm. I've been pulling for you. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's, Mr. Stop, Beast stop, is a great mentor to me. Stop. Hmm? So you're, you're a big fan yeah yeah no i love your team and just lately mr beast has been giving me so much advice and he helped me out before my match uh, singles match and yeah wait Will, william's been giving you advice yeah mr beast yeah okay